Eight, right? Oh. Blanche, can you hear me? <laughs> you got me? I actually sent a request before. I don't know why it didn't work. It My happens. Bad. I'm really sorry. No, the no, wait no, no. has been. <laughs> no, it happens. And good thing, the best yes, in life. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. The Thank best you? things in the best things in life you gotta wait. So I have no problem. Can you hear me okay? Blanche, can you hear me? I do. Oh, it's slow. So it's it's wonderful. Well, hi, to, Brent. Nice to meet you. Cheers, cheers. Yes, I do. It's great meeting you. Um for your fans to know who I am. I'm Brett Barish. I own a liquor company, Wine and Spirits. I own Bamboo, Bel Air, McQueen, uh, uh, Pass Brands, Doucet, Ace of Spades, uh, Blanche. I get to interview very famous people like yourself. I'm very lucky. Uh, everybody from Ross who's watching to Post Malone, DJ Khaled. Uh, we've been doing a whole bunch of artists in Africa uh, from Yemi Alade, Ice Prince, Techno, in your in Cameroon, I, I interviewed. Um, do you know Stanley? Stanley Eno. Of course, that's yeah. That's my friend. He's in my latest video. Oh, he is. Yes. I didn't know that. I love Stanley. Um, I interviewed uh, Valerie Aina. Do you know Valerie? Yeah. Yeah, I model. interviewed Val. Correct. Um, but it's awesome to talk to you. The series is titled Self Made. Um, what I love hearing about is the struggle side, is everyone thinks it's easy, but it's not easy. Um, Blanche, what does self made mean to you? Um, if I have to describe self made, I'll say that self made is going against the grain. Mm -hmm. is you know carrying your own weight and um towards your vision and making it through the struggles and everything that comes with it with the baggage is being different because for me when i you know came when i moved back to cameroon and i started my career till date People still don't get me. People still don't understand who Blanche Bailey is. What is she all about? Is she really all about the music or is she really all about something else, you know? And um, people have tried so much to make me change in order to, you know, be like what the society expects me to be, um, be the good woman, be, be, be the feminine, uh, um, how do I say, the feminine figure that, pe that young girls are allegedly supposed to look up to, you know, and through all that, I've, I've been true to myself. I remain who I am and my fans love the way that I am. They appreciate me for being, actually being different from others, you know, and um, not applying and applying to the norm. So, so that's what self-made is. I'm so, just focused on my vision. I know where I'm going. So how would you describe Bailey. I'd say Blanche Bailey is, um, um, I'm trying to find the word in English, is, um, it's not a, is, is, um, how do I, how do I really put it in English? Is, um, free. You know, women in Africa society are not allowed to have opinions. They're not supposed to speak. They're not supposed to be strong. They're not supposed to be independent. They're not supposed to do things by themselves. And I came into the industry. I'm the only female urban artist that has made it to date. So for people, it's just like a shocker. Like, okay, so Blanche Bailey is a very strong woman. She's strong -willed. She's very ambitious. And um, she goes for her dreams. And she says things the way it is. She is not afraid. She's not scared. And um, she's not ashamed, and um, she is uh, um, she is um, who she is. She doesn't want people. She doesn't want to fake for people to like her. She wants people to like her for who she is, and how she is. 
do, do you think that you moving abroad at a young age help you think look think differently? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's actually a good thing that I, I actually have some of my education over here and then I moved over seas and you know I grew up there so I have like both I have like both I see life you know within both lenses but I would say moving over there for me it gave me an opportunity to know that I'm a person before being a woman I'm a person of my own you know and um, over there they teach everyone we're all equal women can have dreams they can pursue their own goals they can do things by themselves but over here women are so limited when you're growing up they tell you oh you know, you need to learn how to wash plates because in your husband's house, you need to do this because in your husband's, like they always put you down and make sure that, okay, you have to be dependent on your husband. It's a good thing to like, it's a good thing to have a husband and everything that comes with it. But before being someone's wife, you're your own person with aspirations, with dreams, with talent, with so many things that you can achieve. So I feel like me going, moving over there, I was able to learn how to do things by myself. Was, was there somebody when you were in France or the UK, was there somebody that you looked up to that you real a female, a woman that you looked up that you realized, you know what, I don't have to be like, like everyone else. I can do things differently. Um, I think to date my, um, my idol remains Beyonce. Yeah. Um, because I'm a perfectionist. I see how hard she works. When you look at her work, you see, you can see someone that is implicated in everything that she does. You know, above or beside the talent, there is hard work. There is someone that has a vision. There is someone that genuinely wants something. She knows where she's going and she, she makes sure she gives and she only does the best. So that's somebody that motivates me in everything that I do because she is Beyonce before being Jay's wife, right? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, she is my motivation. Um, when did music kick in for you? When did music become you know what, this is what, what I want to do. Music has always been part of me. I grew up in a very, um, I would say, musical environment. My uncle used to be, she, he used to sing. He had this competition that he used to do back then. It was like an intercity competition where they go from town to town, city to city, and, you know, the sing. And I used to go there. And so then I can actually remember all of the candidates. I can remember their songs. And I had my late uncle, may he rest in peace. He was a DJ. He really loved music. He had, you know, all kinds of CDs. That was the only time I had the opportunity to listen to worldly music because I actually come from a very religious background. We only had the opportunity to listen to gospel music. We had like three to four CDs that we, we watch every day, you know. So... It had her, it had my grandmom that always sang to me. She took me to the church. I was part of the choir and stuff like that. So it has always been part and parcel of my whole self. But I think the day that I watched, I don't know how I watched it. I watched Bunny and Clyde from wow. Beyonce. I was like, oh my, I was like, okay, I want to be like this lady. And um, how did I discover that I really had talent for music? It was one day I sang in church and I had like a standing ovation. Everyone was like, oh my God, you sing so well and stuff like that. I was like, oh, so I can actually probably sing. And um, yeah, from there, I just started listening to more and more music. And when I moved overseas, which I had access to the internet, I could be able to like discover other artists and, um, you know, try. And I learned how to write music from doing covers. I used to love remixing people's mm. music. So I would just like, take people's songs and then remix and write my own song to the beat and stuff. And that's how I learned how to write my own song. So what was, what was your first big break? What do you think was the first thing that, that it sounds like the confidence you got, for example, was performing in the choir, but what was, what was like some of your breaks where you felt like, you know what, this is, I, I can do this for a living. This is, I can be somebody in this space. Um, I think when I did my first hit, my first hit song, it wasn't my first song, but it was my first hit song that really hit. And, um, I, for once I saw like, everyone was like, oh, who's this girl? Like everyone was interested in me, even though I had done a few songs back. And I felt at that point I was like, okay, so I can actually do this thing for real. I can actually, you know, invest my whole life into this thing, I'm meant for this thing. And people can actually see that, okay, she's actually good. 
I saw a few people that met me and they advised me and they told me that I was um, I was the revelation of you know Cameroon urban music because I was different. I was just I was just I was just different, man. Back then, it's not even like now. Back then, I was just just too much. <laughs> do, do, but was that killer? No, that was Mimbayo, the collab that I did with Mings. Okay. Yeah, I did that collaboration with Mings. And you know, back then it's a very reserved community. And then you come with a video, you guys are just kissing and just rubbing each other. Everyone was like, how dare she? How can she do this? I was like, so yeah, I think from there I knew that, okay, this is who I am and I'm going to go all the way. So I read, I, I read that, that, that you think uh, music is is an art form, and therefore art is different than maybe you personally. Are, is is you the musician different from than you personally? Um, when I made that tweet, that's not actually what I meant. I didn't mean like okay, when I'm an artist, I'm maybe like something else, and then in person, yep. I'm something else. So I'm still the same person, the focused, the ambitious, the very perfectionist artist and person that. That is Blanche Bailey. But what I meant is that society, especially the African society, has labels on some certain people depending on how they look. You know, yeah. not because I like to yeah. look good. I like to maybe be all made up and stuff that I'm so superficial that I have nothing in here, that I can't work, yeah. that I can't achieve or do things. That's what I meant, that, okay, this is the image that you see. And because of this image that you see, the society has made you think that I can be these things, but I'm not those things. Got it. Yeah. Do, do you, it, it feels like, and this is the way for it is for me, if someone tells you you can't do something, you want to do it even more. <laughs> well, for me, if, if I know that it's something that I like, that I'm good at, that I will succeed in, I don't venture in something that I'm not sure in my spirit that I can do it. I don't just want to prove people wrong, like, oh, you said I'm not going to do that. I will do that. No, but, 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 it's, but it's more if you believe in it and someone yeah. says, no, no, don't do this video. Don't do it like this. Do you get a sense of, no, no, you know what? I got to trust my instinct. I got to do what I think is right. Is that, is that how you, you would describe it? I've always trusted my instincts. Basically, every song that I released, it was my instincts telling me like, okay, this is the song. The funny thing is when I wanted to do the collaboration, when I wanted to do the collaboration with Mings, I literally, I had two songs. When I just moved back, I had two songs. And then the other song was very fast. You know, it was like very, you know, club and stuff. And Africans, we love to dance and stuff. And when I would play to everyone, everyone would tell me, oh no, drop the song, it's banger, it's really nice. It's, it's, everyone is gonna vibe to it. But in my instincts, I knew it was the other way around. I knew that was the track. I knew that was the artist I had to feature on it. And I made it happen and everything is history. And it's been like that for, for almost all my songs when I dropped Bon Bon. I remember I played it to a few producers. People were like, no, this is not the track. It's just so repetitive. It's just so, it's just so, I'm like, okay, you don't know. <laughs> this is the song. Are you, are, you, are you ever surprised at songs that you think are not successful that become successful? Yep. What do you think? Do, do, have, have you figured it out? Because to me, no one has. Meaning you just don't know sometimes what's going to work and what's not. And, and I, always, I always find this with artists where it could even be in my space where unless you put it out there, you don't know. You don't know what people like. Well, I, you don't know what people like, but it's still kind of a way to know what people like. From releasing a few music and learning, you know, there, there is a type of sound, a type of video, a type of look, a type of lyric, a type of, you know, that people definitely just directly, you know, connect to. So there is no formula, but it is still quite a formula to everything, you know? Yep. And um, some songs might not just be the hit as you see it, but they might actually still make that impact, but it might not be the big hit that you felt like. Like when I dropped my song, Come We Stay, that was like my first single when I came back to Cameroon. I did Come We Stay. I knew it was going to be a big thing, but it wasn't an immediate big thing until when I dropped my other song that made me a big thing, then everyone ran back to it. I was like, oh, this song is actually banging. And it became a big thing. 
Then I dropped another one called Dango. I was like, oh, Dango, this is going to be like this. This is the song. This is the song. But no, it wasn't the song. It was, it was what it was. But it wasn't like big, like I saw it. Yep. You know? But then it's still a song that when I go during shows and I sing, people just sing it out like line for line. And I'm like, how do you guys even know this song? It's not... It's not the song that plays on the street. It's not the song that's always on radio and TV, but everyone still knows it. So I believe like successful music cannot be, you know, compared. There are songs that are like everywhere. Everyone knows it is on the street, is on the radio. There are songs that people just listen to it when they're alone and they know the song. So it's, you cannot really, you know, measure. Do, do, um, when you can, take me through, when you, when you moved back to Cameroon, you, did you always know you'd move back? No. What made you make that decision? Um, when I did my first song, Kila, and um, I was paying for promo here, and um, it wasn't having the effect that I, I needed to have. I moved, I, I came back for like a few months, and I did um, Come We Stay, and I stayed for five months, and I did some promo, and I really saw how things were moving. And I was like, okay. It definitely makes sense. You cannot be doing music for these people and you're not there. Yeah. You have to be on ground to connect with them because yep. there, there are a lot of things that you miss from that distance. Yeah. There might be the latest line on the street that you don't know. And then one thing about being over there is you're very influenced by over there, you know? Yep. When I was in the UK, Nigerian music was at its peak. That was when yep. like Afro beats was at its peak. And that's actually where I moved. So we were, I was somehow influenced the way I sound, my slangs, and somehow, you know, my Cameroonians don't really connect. They wouldn't, they would connect, but they wouldn't connect that much. But now when you start using slangs that are like from your own place, you know, now they'll be like, okay, I, I understand what she's saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually decided to come for some time. I wanted to stay for a year, get a place and just move in between like, okay, because I didn't want to get a hotel <clears throat> and stuff. I'm trying to save money because I'm an independent artist. You know, That's right. That's <laughs> you don't right. want to spend all your money. You're trying to maximize right. the budget for your, for your career. So, but then I came back and then I did my first song, uh, uh, Min Bayer, and it just blew all over and I'm still in Cameroon. Please take me <laughs> away. But you, but, do you wish you'd come back earlier? Um, no. Not at all? No. Because it, it almost sounds like, I look at everything, you, you take what you learn. It's like you said, I don't think you would have appreciated how you could be a woman and be independent and do your own thing had you not had that experience. You needed both of those things, correct? Yep, yep. Are you surprised now, you know, I'm sure uh, you realize now that there are people that look up to you like you looked up to Beyonce. <laughs> yeah. What is that It's weird like? when people still meet me and they're like, oh my God, Blanche. Some people actually cry and, and do some crazy stuff. I'm still like, uh, what's happening? It's just- Does, It still feels like it's not real. Yeah. Do you remember the first time someone recognized you? Yeah, I do. And that at that time, it was like, oh, my God, they know me. <laughs> was it, where was this? In Cameroon or in the UK? Where, in France? Um, well, well, I was recognized in Cameroon. You know, when you blow up here, you naturally just blow up, you know, over there. Yeah. Because you have people living there that want to connect to their base, yeah. their source. So they just know you. So people used to recognize me when I walk on the street. Okay, let me give this one. This day... <clears throat> what is happening? Oh. I don't know why my phone keeps... There's When I did my first song, that really blew up, Mimbaye, right? I was still living in the little house that I had rented because I was a nobody. I was trying to maximize my budget on my music. Because when I did my video, I really had a hard time. The guy that shot that video didn't really bring out the what vision that I had to do. Yeah, so I had to spend way more money to have someone fix it. And it really brought me down because I didn't really have a lot. 
So I was living in my house and Mimbayo was like a big track. Everyone knew me. I was all over the place. And I was still living in that house because I couldn't afford to move. Because like I said, the priority is the music is what you're doing at that point. You want to have more music out, build your portfolio, make more money in the future. And then, you know, you can get a more comfortable place and lifestyle. And I think I was outside. I don't know what I was doing outside. And then there was some girl opposite my house. And she saw me and she recognized me. And she ran all the way to my house and I ran inside and I closed the door. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, no. Does it still feel good? Uh, well, sometimes, I think right now, sometimes I want to just pass and just leave. Yeah. Not being noticed sometimes. Um, but I think it, feel, it will always feel good to, to, to know that you have so much impact on people Correct. that are look up to you. And um, whatever you're doing has some impact in their lives. And they can actually identify. And I've met people that would tell me, oh, my God, you sang this song. And it really made me feel something. You sang this song. It's like you were talking about my story. Like, I was going through that same thing. Yep. You did this song, and it helped me move on. Yep. And stuff like that. Those type of comments just, you know, it just makes my day, makes my person, and it encourages me more. I'm like, okay, I want to keep doing this thing because even if people are telling me not to do it the way I'm doing it, it's making and it's having the impact that it's supposed to have. So I have to even do it more. Do you, does it, do you feel a sense of responsibility now? Again, this, the responsibility for those, gir for example, those girls who want to do what you're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the problem is, like I said before, these girls don't want to listen. They feel like because I look like this, I'm what they think in their head. Yeah. But when they come close, I always want to let them know that I look like this, but I work so hard to look like this. Yes, right? yes. I work hard. I'm a business owner. I had when when I when I made my when I did my first Europe tour, uh, 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 and I had my first big budget and stuff. I started investing. I had I opened my first um, saloon spa in my city. Buya. And right now I'm in Douala. I'm working. I'm almost done. I'm doing the second one. I, so how did, how did you, it's Queen Mimba, right? Yeah. How, how did that happen? When I did my song Mimba, yeah. Mimba, yeah. Mimba means pride. Like, oh, someone that's very proud. But yeah. to me, it means confidence because if you don't have confidence, you cannot be proud. So when I call myself Queen Mimba is because I've inspired so many ladies to be courageous in how they look. So many ladies look up to me with the fact that, okay, I'm, I'm a big lady, I'm curvy, but I'm still sexy, you know? Some, some people didn't like, they didn't like their curves and I inspired them that, okay, you can, you're curvy and it's a good thing. You can look yep. good, you can carry yourself yep. in a certain way. Yep. You, can, you can be admired too, you know? So, um, that's how it came about. From that song, everyone started calling me Queen Mimba, Queen Mimba, and I just kept it. And how did you decide to open the salon? I've always been beauty. I grew up in mm. a house. My mom used to plait my hair, do everything. She used to spoil me, and she's a hairdresser. She's a professional hairdresser. I grew up in that. I saw her doing that. I was, And whenever she didn't like doing my hair or she liked doing hair, some hairstyles that I don't like, I will go and do my own hair. And that's how I learned how to do my own hair. And when she started learning nails, I would actually learn as well because I want to go do it for my friends and get paid. Yep. Because I've always been a hustler. And I used to shop for my friends, for my aunties. I would buy stuff and I always want to resell them. I would, my aunt, the people have always felt like I have some sort of style. I don't know. And I want to maximize on that, right? Of course. Did, did, did you imagine you, you know, five years ago, opening a salon, doing these things? Could you have imagined? No. I knew I was going to be a lawyer because I, I love criminal law. <laughs> you like fighting. You like fighting. <laughs> yes? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So um, you, you, I, my understanding is you're working on an actual album now, correct? Yeah. It's your first one. Yep. Isn't that, don't you think that's amazing that you could go, you could go this far without actually releasing an album? That's crazy. That I don't like think I've ever, I've ever talked to anybody who's been 
that longevity is successful without an album. Yeah, is it's it amazing. And, 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 and that's really why we're not in a rush to just drop an album because, you know, we want to do it. I, I had an EP planned for last year. I didn't drop it because I was still not satisfied. I, I you know, I just really want to bring something new, a new Blanche Bailey. I want people to just discover me on another angle and stuff, you know. And I want to take time to work on my album and actually deliver something great so that my fans can be like, okay, this girl, okay, we agree, we give up. Queen Mimba. <laughs> do, you, do, do you have the album name? I have a few names. But I haven't decided. But I, I haven't decided. But I have All a right. few ideas. So uh, if you could collab with anybody in Africa, who would you collab with, male and female? Oh, a lot. There's a lot. There's, there's, a, there's a whole long list. Just give, give, me, give me one name, one male, one female. Uh, Tiwa Savage. Yeah. Uh, boy and a boy. All right. Um, if you could collab in the U.S. with two artists, one male, one female. Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> The male, Rick Ross. All right, Rick Ross. He's he's watching. He's watching. He's watching. <laughs> um, I think you know you 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 made a comment to me, uh, and I I always I get inspired by talking to people. And what I think is true about you is, and you use the word hustler. You're not successful by accident. You you work hard. You you make it happen. And to me that is the most successful people because they're going to go get it done. They're going to do it. Uh, they'll find a way to do it. They'll find a way to make it happen, to make it work. Um, and that's inspiring. That's awesome. Um, Thank you. So what's next? So let's assume COVID's over. Everyone's healthy. What do you want to be doing? I want to I wanna have like Blanche Bailey tour around the world. I want to have my own show where I can actually showcase everything that I have in my heart that I see, you know, have your own show. That is, that is what I am planning. When I do my album and I go for my promo and stuff like that, we're planning to actually do like a tour. Maybe we might start doing like Africa tour. And um, yeah, I like taking things step by step. I'm not in a rush, yep. you know? No, no, and, it's um, like when, when you're in a rush, you, you, you burn bridges and stuff. I, I'm in this thing. I didn't know I would do this. I just found that I had this talent and I'm like, okay, this is my passion. I'm going to go for it. And through my, throughout my career, I learn, I become better. I show my fans that, you know, I'm actually learning how to be great at this thing. I might, I might have been born with this talent, but I'm actually through my journey getting better and better. So I might make some mistakes. Sometimes I might not be the best, but trust me, I am actually learning and becoming the best that I can ever be of myself. How do you feel about Cameroonian artists now? Like, how do you feel about the music scene in Cameroon? Well, I would say is man it's, it's growing like it's growing because me as a fan of cameroon music back then when i wasn't even looking at music i was just listening to them and i know all the struggles and i see how how we've grown in such a short time it's amazing and i know that the world is a limit right now because back then they weren't even as much artists and right now, they couldn't even live off music. But right now, we live off music. I, I, I can open businesses for music money and stuff like that. That is just so much evolution that has happened. And slowly, the world is, you know, opening up to us. The, the, they recognize us. And um, slowly, the world has actually adopted African music. Yep. And that is the future. Yeah, no, and I, I, I said before you came on, uh, I think, what, Burna Boy and WizKid won Grammys, which is awesome, which yep. is awesome. And I'm a huge Those fan. Those things used to look like a dream. You're like. Correct. Well, I'm a sometimes... huge fan of, I'm a huge fan of, uh, I want uh, U.S. artists to work. That's my goal is to work more with African artists because yep. both sides benefit hugely. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Blanche, I really appreciate talking to you. You're inspiring. Um, one day when travel, Cameroon is one of the stops I want to make, which I've never been to. 
So now oh, yeah? I've got three. Now I've got three friends in Cameroon that I get to come <laughs> and visit. Oh, uh, love to and have our you. But I wish you the best of luck. If there's anything I can possibly do for you, um, uh, I, I love your music. I love what you're doing. I can't wait to see when you open Queen Mimba, uh, the second salon. Thank so you so much. Thank let's you for make having that me happen. Here. But anything I can do, let me know, all right? Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you, for everybody. having me on this platform. Thank you. Thank and you. And I everybody. would definitely reach out to you. <laughs> Good. Good. Do. Good. Yes. Anybody, and, and tell us who else we should interview and. We want to hear people's stories, all right? Okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.